Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Gunda 7.7 has a request, and here it is. Can you show me how to make a dovetail clamp to fit these type of micrometers onto a rod? And what he's talking about is the Michitoyo. And this is, it's actually not a micrometer. It is a test indicator. And what it has, it has a dovetail. So it actually has three sets. It has one on the front, the top, and the back. And what it's for is to put a post on it so you can hold it in different types of clamps or arms. Well, he didn't get one of these with his test indicator. And that's what I want to show you guys today is how to make one of these. They're very easy. and very, very versatile to have around more than one. So what's interesting about these is we're going to build this one 3 8 And 3 8 is kind of a common size, but it's not at the same time. It's one of those things that's like, no matter what size pin you have, it's the wrong one for the clamping system you have. It's kind of like cats. You know, you let a cat outside, well, he's always on the wrong side of the door. So we're going to show you how to make one in 3 8 and then you may guys may want to make several different sizes but this is a great start. Now, what we need to first do is take some measurements. We need to take a depth measurement. In this case, it's about 55 thousandths. And I'm going to come over here, touch that off. And it's just simply, I'm just going to bring down the cutter until it stops. Call that zero. Come over to the dial, zero out the dial. Move it off and bring the Z axis or the table up, oh, 55 thousandths. Now we have the depth set. Next, we got to get this 3 16th inch cutter in the center. And we're going to do that by, I'm going to touch off this side, set the DRO, touch off this side, and then subtract the difference. I know this is kind of a crude way to find the center, but it actually does work. It's going to get me within a couple thousandths, and all I was doing was listening for when it started to cut the steel. So let's take our distance here, which is almost 5.50, so half of that is 2.75. So what we're going to do here is zero and bring the cutter back, 2.75. And that's going to give us our first cut. And then we got two more after that. So let me show you. So there we go. Now, as you know, I'm not using a dovetail bit on this well because I don't have a dovetail bit that small. And it's not worth my time to go buy one or my time to build one. So I'm going to show you a different technique. So we've got the depth and the first cut. Now we have to develop the width. And the width on these are about 200 thousandths. And what I'm going to do as a gauge to mark this is I'm going to pull out these spacer blocks. And I'm just going to pull out a spacer block that's 200 thousandths or 2 tenths or 2 hundredths or 2 tenths. And when it's time, I'm going to fit this in here as my uh, go or no-go gauge. Now, we know this is a 3 16th inch cutter. And decimal-wise, that is 0.1875. And we know we need to get up to uh, 200 thousandths. So the difference there is about 13 thousandths of an inch. So we need to take off half of that on each side. So Let's take off seven on each side. So 
So let's see how I did. There we go. Our no go, no go gauge right into place. Now here's where the magic starts. Like I said, I didn't use a dovetail cutter because I don't have one. What we're going to do now to get the dovetail to work is we're going to take a triangular file. Now the challenge with a triangular file is sometimes they're too big and they're also tapered. Also there is a cutting edge on all three sides. Well what I did is I ground off this back side. Now I cheated. I used the surface grinder. You don't have to use a surface grinder. You could do this with a hand grinder. You could do it with a pedestal grinder, whatever you have. But take your time, get it as flat as you can, and get rid of those teeth. So now this is just hand work. What I also want to talk about is burrs. This has a lot of burrs on it that we need to take off. So it takes a while to get the file to work. So there we go, got it to fit in there. I think this will work. Now I'm going to take you over to the lathe and show you what the next step is because we have to put in some sort of lock system that works very efficiently and easy to operate. We're here at the ENCO lathe. I've taken out the call-up block and here's the part that we just made because I need the collet that's inside this block to hold it. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have ever seen a collet set up on a lathe, but this is one here that simply fits a collet holder there. And in the back, I have this long draw, draw bar. Fits all the way through. And I can put my collet inside here and get it clamped up. We're going to put our pin back in. Let's see, we're on a fairly, let's speed this up a little bit. And I need to drill a center hole in this. And what we're doing here we're going to set up a clamping system where we're going to drill this out, thread it, put a set screw in, and this is a quarter 28 set screw from the back, and we're also going to put this brass bar in there, and it's going to be a plunger that pushes forward and locks this dovetail into place. So it's pretty simple. We drill out this side, we drill for this hole all the way back. We turn the part around, drill it out for the threading, tap it, and then we should be done. We're also going to take advantage of a couple other things. Since we've got this in the lathe here, we're going to deburr it with a small file and a couple other things. So let's get cracking.
So there we go. We've got the hole drilled. We've got it tapped out. We've even got some chatter in there just for fun. So next is we have to set a pin in here. And the challenge of the pin is it has to have a little shoulder on it and we have to turn down a very slight diameter to make that happen. But I'll show you how we do that. We switch collets. So the challenge here is going to be, of course, supporting the brass for this. And I'm trying to think of how much I need to turn down. Let's take a drill bit, see how well it fits in there. See if we can figure out an edge. So we're kind of in that ballpark. So we've got that length, plus we want to lose a little bit of that. Now we are turning brass here. We're going to turn it at a very high speed. Brass loves to bite in, but we're going to try to go with just a neutral giant geometry on the cutter. That means the cutter's not pointing up, it's not pointing down. It's just pointing straight in and hope the brass doesn't grab. Let's find out what happens. We're going to take very slight cuts. There it is, completed, tightened down, ready to put into service. As you can see, you don't necessarily have to have every tool in the shop to build something like this. Just think about what is possible with what you have, and you can make a small dovetail very easily. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, some of your great comments. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.